Everybody look out, white guy with an opinion. So I don't know if you're aware or not, but the PDJ elections for the board of directors starts next month, July 1st. To go ahead and answer your question, no, I have never voted. But as I've gotten older and I've looked at what's going on around me, as I think you should too, you start to see things that you don't like or that you don't agree with. And so I intend to exercise my right to vote for the board of directors. I've been, I'm very interested in one in particular that is Philip Mills. He's one that uh, I really dig his bio and everything that he talks about. And I'll touch base on some of the things that he talks about and kind of give you a, not really tell you exactly, not to say, not to say that you should vote for this person, but to explain to you why I, I'm leaning towards this person versus this other person that I do not want there. And I'm sure you know who that is if you've watched my videos at all. So first good thing about Philip, he is a CPA, a certified public accountant. So he knows how to handle money and he talks about that in his bio. So obviously that's good with the amount of money coming in for the PDJ. He can, he, he knows what to do with that. He knows how to track it and and know what money is being spent where and all of that stuff. So that, that's obviously a very good thing. Now I'm going to read a few things from his his uh, bio uh, candidate statement that I, that I like. Uh, review the use of membership dues and ensure funds are being used in good faith and for the benefit of the members. He will investigate the association's internal controls to ensure the association is using the most appropriate resources to best prevent fraud and material misstatement of financial data. So obviously he knows how to handle the money and make sure that it's being used properly. So here's where he hooked me in though, because this is something that is really important to me and I think a, a large population in the disc golf community, or at least it should be and it better be. He talks about conflict of interest. He says, another important but overlooked understanding of becoming a board member is conflicts of interest. We need to talk about it. Yes, we do. As I have already said before, someone has a conflict of interest. That's wrong. Board members in most organizations are required to report all conflicts of interest they have. All of the current board members' conflict of interest statements are available on the PJ website for your viewing pleasure, which I had looked up days ago before I ever even saw this. So the fact that he knows that and I, I was like, oh, wow, that's because I literally downloaded them on my phone and, you know, it shows them that the date that they did which is after they were brought in which I thought was weird and he explains this to me disc golf is in a unique spot in its life cycle there are a significant number of sponsorships affiliations companies events products etc that individuals seek and are involved in and most of these affiliations are specifically related to disc golf he says think about it becoming sponsored or affiliated is one of the most sought out goals of a disc golfer Conflicts of interest are not necessarily inherently bad, but it is impossible to mitigate unconscious bias fully. For those unaware of unconscious bias, it basically states you are making decisions or assumptions from your subconscious, whether you know it or not. It is impossible to eliminate, but vital to understand and mitigate as best as possible. Now, you can say all day that you don't have a conflict of interest, but I mean, we, we can clearly see that there's conflicts of interest in, in, in on the PDJ board of directors. Don't pretend that there's not, because you're just lying to yourself at this point. I'll let you read the rest of this, but he goes on to say something that I was interested in. He says, conflicts of interest disclosures are not required until taking a seat on the board, but I will disclose to you today that I have no conflicts of interest, and I will put my full attention on you once again. Without you, the PDJ does not exist. So you don't have to have a fill out your conflict of interest form until you're on the board. That seems wrong to me, especially when the, the, there there's clear conflicts of interest already on the board. And all right, here's another one. He says reevaluating of the division classification and applicable descriptions. Disc golf has evolved significantly since the last revision of the divisions, and we need to consider the spectrum of players to allow inclusivity and ensure fair competition. Like that also, include people, but also be fair. See, I like that he's 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 very good with his words. He's not just 
saying things just to say them and try, trying to overly complicate what he's saying by throwing big words at you. He wants inclusivity, as do I. Nobody, there's, who, who is not included in disc golf right now at all? I mean, who are we not including? I don't, I don't understand why that's even something that needs to be spoken of, but. So I'm not gonna go in and read, read and rant on a lot of things that he said. He's just someone that I wanna highlight uh, for you to look at. And, cause I don't wanna like just tell, I don't wanna influence anybody on saying go for this person or whatever. Uh, I mean, obviously this is someone that I'm interested in right now as a candidate, so. You know, do your research don't just take what I say so that brings us to the next person the person that is currently on the board that I don't agree with that is obviously Laura Nagdegal and this is her candidate statement so her her key points are more diversity equity and inclusion on the fairway obviously we know what that means that's where the conflict of interest comes in in my opinion she goes on to say, disc golf is still mostly a sport played by white men in the USA. Okay, well, that's where it started. That's Those are the people that have grown the sport as to where it's at. So she goes on to say, more efforts need to be made to attract, engage, and retain underserved, underrepresented, and underhighlighted groups of people, meaning her, most notably women, black indigenous people of color, and people outside of the USA. And she's going to say, but more on that later. So, you're not doing a good job of attracting women. Real women? We're talking about real women. Not, you, not, not what you think a woman is. What an actual woman is. You're not doing a good job of that. You're not the person to be leading the way for that. Okay. She's just hiding behind this veil of using pe people of color. Like, just, just say what you're going to say. Just say that you want more transgenders in women's sports. You want to attract more people. That's what, that's really what your, your version of diversity really means. It doesn't mean that you care that there are more black or Chinese or, or a, a, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't look through that kind of scope of, well, well, there's not enough black people here. There's not enough of these people here. I look at people as people. I don't need a pie chart showing me how many people are of this color and that color playing the sport. Just get the sport out, let people play it. That's fine. They will love it, I guarantee. We will be fine. Just stop hiding behind this bullshit wording that you're, you're using to try to trick people into thinking that you don't have an agenda. We all know that you do. Disc golf claims to be for all, and we need to move from action to deed to follow through on our work. We love to use these words that, to, to try to confuse you and and make, make things sound like she means something that she doesn't. She will negate herself at some point in this. I guarantee you that. You'll see. In any case, the time to say, well, if you insist, you may join is past. Like, we're not doing enough to grow the sport by just letting people, like, hey, come play the sport. Like, showing off the sport. Doing everything that all these great people have done for the sport. You know, Jomez and, and Central Coast and all them showing how awesome the sport is. And all these other people showing it off. Like, hey, that, that's just not enough in her eyes and she says uh that does nothing but othering and disenfranchising already underrepresented <laughs> people even more really that's disenfranchising them are you fucking kidding disenfranchising them that's the word you chose to use disenfranchising already underrepresented people even more what the fuck clearly she's Hiding behind other people to, to cover up her actual agenda in the sport. Because that, that's just, that's what I see. If you see differently, then that's fine. Tell me what you see below. You give me your words, but I, that's what I see. Then she goes on to talk about further professionalization of the sport. And here's where I start to agree with her. In order for the sport to grow even more at grassroots level, the elite level of the sport needs to be elevated more, made more elite, so that more will see what makes the sport so appealing to all players of all levels. I 100% agree with that. That is where I'm, we're all on the same page there, that it, it's too easy for people to get to the elite level. It needs to be harder, it needs to be, it just needs to be elite. It's not elite enough right now. Kudos on that, Laura, I totally agree with you on that, so there we go. That's how you should have started it off from the get-go instead of the other stuff you were saying, because you're not, you weren't off to a good start there, but I agree with that. And she talks about obtaining more mainstream sponsors, which I think we're already trying to do. We've been trying to do. Just that's just gonna 
that's just gonna come naturally. Um, so just keep, obviously that's something we want to. Big, big talks on globalization. Uh, being, the, being the Global Disc Golf Association, too often the sport focuses a lot on the USA and its reality. Obviously, you're going to, I mean, if 80% of your profits are coming from one place, you're going to kind of focus more on that. You're going to please the people that you need to please that are paying your, paying for the club, that are doing that. I mean, obviously, that's it's common sense. What, there's no reason for you to claim that. But I do agree that, yeah, take some time and instead of just focusing on here all the time, focus on here too. So, yeah, I, I kind of understand what you're saying there. So, yeah. Okay, and she continues to say in for the globalization of disc golf in messaging policies and marketing the global appeal and reach and international standards need to be a base level where to depart from not a special feature that is added. that is great that she's thinking globally uh so whereas most people are only thinking here in the united states so yeah i, I understand that that's she's probably right in, in a lot of aspects on that uh then she's gonna say just like there's not any single reason why more women or black indigenous people of color don't play disc golf. There's no reason why the same proportion of the global population wouldn't play disc golf. So there she goes and kind of negates herself like she said earlier. There, so she brings up like that we need more people, but then she also, more people of color, more more women, but then she goes back and says, well, there's no reason why they're not. Because, because there isn't any reason why they're not. They're, they're, they're not because they're, they just, they either don't know the sport or it's just not available in their area. They don't have a course or something. Like, I live in South Carolina. I only have two full 18-hole courses here in the Myrtle Beach area. And, like, some small courses. Like, that's... This is a... It's a big thing around here. Very big thing around here. And there's a lot of attention on it. So, more courses in places where people want them. And courses in areas where there are none. That's how you grow it. Not about looking out, seeking out specific color and types of people. People are just people. It doesn't matter, all of that. So, I told you, she's gonna, she negated herself. She's bringing up like there's not enough black indigenous people of color. But then there's no, well, there's no real reason why they're not playing, so. Which we already knew that, duh. We're inclusive in disc golf. You know that word you keep wanting to throw around? We are inclusive in disc golf. Unless you're Russian or Belarusian, that is the only two people that are not allowed to play in PDGA sanctioned events. <laughs> Other than those two people, we're all inclusive, right? The reason I made this video is not just to crap all over Laura's statements and, and break her down and, and all of that. It's, it's to open people's eyes and even my own. I've never voted before. I, that's wrong of me. I should have been voting. I should have all that, but I've just been a player of the sport. So I... I've opened my eyes a little more. I guess as I've gotten older, I'm, I'm seeing things differently. I'm like, look at these other candidates. Don't just vote for for the Philip Phil or whatever because I mentioned him. But I just wanted to highlight the things that he said because those are things that are important to me that he's talking about. But Laura also has things that are important to her. So I'm sure they have a lot in common too. So don't just be jaded and vote for Laura just because of the reasons that you voted for her previously, actually do your research and make an informed decision. That's what I'm doing. Like, people give me shit all the time about, well, why do you care all of a sudden about women's sports and why do you care about this? The reason is because I've opened my eyes and I'm paying attention to what's going on around me. I've matured and I see things differently. I could just continue doing what I was doing and not paying any attention to anything and just be the same person that just goes and plays and doesn't get involved in any way shape or form but that's not how it should be as the sport grows we really have to start paying more attention to what's going on with the sport and not everything that the pdga does are we're going to agree with we just aren't i'm sure there are rules changes that a lot of you would love to have that 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 uh, may or may not ever change so and the only way to do it is to vote the people that see things the way that you kind of see them or kind of on the same plane even though you may or may not agree with them so that's what i'm saying make an informed decision look at these other people that's what i'm doing